everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And for today's review, I'm going to be taking a look at the regular Power Rangers and Bandai America's new 6.5 inch Legacy Collection line. Now, two of the figures that I'm looking at today were released in the first wave with the Green Ranger and the Red Ranger, and then the Pink Ranger, the Blue Ranger, and the Black Ranger are in the new second wave, which are just now starting to hit shelves. And then the second wave also includes two other figures, two Space Ranger figures, which I'll be taking a look at in a later review. And you can see that the Wave 1 figure comes in pretty much the same looking packaging as the Wave 2 figure. You've got the Power Rangers logo up at the top. It tells you it comes with a build a Mechazord piece. You've got the figures clearly displayed. Down here in the right corner you've got images of the character and then you've got lightning on the packaging that corresponds with the color of the character. You've got the Power Rangers logo down below and the name off to the side. The only real difference on the front of the packaging between the Wave 1 and the Wave 2 is these Wave 2 figures do have this limited edition sign on the front and from what I'm told that basically just means these figures will not be reissued again so it's not like they're going to be harder to find I don't think but supposedly they're never going to be reissued or repackaged again. Then on the back of the packaging, again, very similar. You've got the Mechazord, and it shows you how which uh, figure comes with which piece. The only difference is down here below, the Wave 1 figure shows you all the figures in Wave 1, and the Wave 2 figure obviously shows you all the figures in Wave 2. All right, let's get these open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figures outside of the packaging along with the other contents. Now, I should note that with the Green Ranger, I said all the packaging was basically the same, but the Green Ranger was also a little bit different different because he actually does not come with a Megazord piece. He just comes with two extra accessories. So instead of saying he comes with the Megazord piece, it says he comes with two different exclusive accessories. And those accessories are, he's got the death sword that he comes with. And this is done with a metallic silver on the blade. And you've got the little red and then the black on the handle. And this is a pretty kind of bendy, rubbery type plastic that they've used with it. And then he comes with the dragon sword as well. And the detailing on the dragon Dragon Sword is pretty nice. You've got the green with the metallic gold and the black on the blade with the metallic silver and then the black on the handle. So that looks pretty good and he's got a little holster for, for that as well. And then he also comes with an extra pair of hands which are yeah, I'm kind of redundant. I don't really think he needs these but he does come with them nevertheless. And he's the only figure that does come with extra sets of hands. And these are kind of more open hands than the regular grip hands that he comes that come attached to the figure. And then the four other figures come with pieces to the Mighty Morphin Megazord. So the Red Ranger from Wave 1 comes with the torso piece that has the head. Then the Blue Ranger has the, the right leg. Now we're still missing the left leg, which is going to be with the Yellow Ranger, which is yet to be released. And I believe will be coming in Wave 3 of the, of the Legacy line. So the leg just pops on there. And then you've got the two arms with the pink and the black rangers and again these just kind of pop right on there with ball joints. Okay, so here's a look at the Megazord fully assembled minus the left leg that comes with the yellow ranger and this thing's going to stand about just under eight inches tall and then here's a comparison with the ninja Megazord that was in wave one. And the figure's got pretty nice detailing. You've got the red plastic with the metallic silver, and then you've got some yellow here and red and white on the shoulders. I like the way the head is sculpted on this one, and he's got this little backpack. So, and then he's got the horns on the feet. So again, I think overall it comes off looking pretty good. Now articulation, you can turn the head to the left and the right, and it's got a little bit of up and down movement there with the head. And then you can rotate the arms pretty good. The arms do have these uh, shoulder pads, which you can actually uh, remove if you wanted to, and they do have some articulation. You can move them up and down. Though even without the shoulder pads, he can really only get his arms out about that much. And then he's got a single hinged elbow elbow so he can bend his elbow about that much. You've got swivels on the wrist, no finger articulation or anything, and then you've got the legs that are just attached with ball joints. There's no kind of waist swivel or anything. You do have a knee joint which is a ball joint essentially so he can bend his knee about that much and then the feet are again are attached with ball joints which you can move back and forth and you can rotate and you can also rotate at the knee. 
And then finally for accessories, the Red Ranger, the Black Ranger, the Blue Ranger, and the Pink Ranger all come with their signature blade blaster weapons, and they've got little holsters to hold the blaster. So the holster is just white, and then the blade blaster has got some white, red, and then on the tip, metallic silver. And the blade fits in the holster pretty good, and then the holster just attaches to the side of the figure. There's a hole on the side, and there's a little peg on the holster, and it just plugs in. And then you can also get the figure to hold the blade. Uh, blaster though it would have been cooler if you'd gotten uh, if they'd given us weapons with the extended blade or something as it is you just basically can have them hold it and that's about it for the figures themselves, overall I think these look pretty good. They have basic paint applications. There's no wash effect or anything like that. You've just got the basic colors. So you've got the pink on the pink ranger, blue on the blue, black on the black, red on the red, and green on the green. And then you've got the white color. I will say with the black ranger, the blue ranger, and the pink ranger from wave two, I do believe there's an error with these belts. I believe these belts should be painted white like you see on the green and the red ranger. But as it is, they've used a more metallic silver looking color. I like the gold metallic on the on the buckles and the red outline and you see that on each one the Green Ranger has the most detail because he's got these uh, he's got this shoulder pad piece so he's got the metallic gold and he's also got some metallic gold on his arms so he's got the most detail and then their helmets obviously are unique here's a close-up of the Green Ranger's helmet the red the blue the pink who's the female of the group and also has the skirt piece which is different from the others and this is done with just kind of a vinyl type material so it does have a little bit of flexibility but it will limit some of the movement of the legs which I'll show you in just a bit. And then finally the Black Ranger's helmet which is probably my favorite of the group. I think the Black Ranger is the coolest looking of the bunch. And each of the five figures have a unique belt buckle which is nice detailing and out of the five I think I like the Red Ranger's belt buckle the best. Articulation is pretty much the same on all of these across the board. You can turn the head to the left and to the right and they can look down good and they can look up a little bit. Arms attached with a ball hinge joint so you can get the arm out about that much. Good rotation there. Has a bicep swivel. Has a double hinged elbow so good bending at the elbow. Has swivels at the wrist. Has up and down movement with the hands. Has an ab crunch type joint so he can crunch down about that much and he can look back about that much there at the uh, midsection. He's got a waist swivel. Legs are attached with ball joints so he can do the splits good. He can get his leg forward pretty good and he can do his leg out and back. He's got a thigh swivel. He's got a double jointed knee so good bending at the knee. He's got a boot cuff swivel. He's got hinges on the feet so good up and down movement. And then he's got ankle pivot and no peg holes on the bottom of the feet. Now the Pink Ranger differs a little bit with articulation. She only has a single hinged elbow so she can bend her elbow about that much. And then as I mentioned before, she's got the skirt piece so that limits her leg movement a little bit. She can only do the splits about that much and she can only do her leg forward and back about that much. So the four male Rangers all measure about six and three quarter inches tall and then the female pink ranger is about six and a half maybe a hair under six and a half inches tall so here's a comparison with some of the ninja storm power ranger figures from wave one Sorry I don't have any SH Figure Arts Power Rangers to give you a comparison, but here's a comparison with the SH Figure Arts Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figure as well as Marvel Iron Man and Captain America figures. Here's a comparison with some Hasbro Marvel Legend figures. And then finally here's a comparison with a Mattel Dawn of Justice Batman figure, a Mezco Mortal Kombat figure, DC Collectible 6 inch Icon Superman figure, and a DC Collectible 7 inch Joker figure. So that's my review. Overall, I think these are pretty good figures. They're about $20 each, so they're not like super expensive. Basic paint applications. Articulation is decent. Joints are tight on them. They could use a little more in the way of weapons. I think they're a little light on the weapons. And then the air on the Wave 2 figures as far as the belts, but that's just a minor uh, nitpick honestly it doesn't bother me that much so overall like I said if you're a fan of Power Rangers I think these are ones you'll definitely want to add to your collection so the wave one figures have been out for a while and the wave two figures are just now starting to hit retail shelves so if you're wanting to add those to your collection you should start checking places like Target or Walmart or what have you we'll have a full image gallery up at toynewseye.com there'll be a link in the video description below as always leave a comment let us know what you think if you're so inclined please like the video also if you haven't already please follow 
following me on my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. I'll have links to those in the video description below. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Yeah.